what I want to do is take a 24 volt relay, put it into some ladder logic, make my diagram, and, and analyze the logic that's actually going on in the diagram. I'm going to use a normally open switch to turn a light on. I'm going to use the same normally open switch to turn another light off. Then I'm going to use a normally closed switch to do the opposite. And we'll see how the logic is kind of a little bit complicated, but it's pretty cool. And the other is that we're going to look at how one switch can control more than one light. Okay, here we go. So, because we're using a 24 volt coil, I'm going to write a 24 volts here, and we're actually going to use 24 volt lights as well. But if I really wanted to, I could use a 24 volt coil to drive 12 volt lights, or 110 volt lights, or vice versa. Depending on the actual relay coil that you buy, or when you buy a relay, it'll tell you what the voltage of the coil is, or if you need a 24 volt coil, or a relay, or a 6 volt relay, you can go buy one. Okay, so let's continue here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a normally open contact, and I'm drawing that properly, I'm putting space in there, and I'm going to draw a circle here, and that's my relay coil. So that represents the coil in the relay. So if I were to draw my relay over here, that's the coil. So that wire and that wire. That point right there and these two points are right here and right here. That's the coil. It's not the relay, it's the coil. The relay has got these contacts, one, two, three. That's the common, normally open, normally closed. And we'll write another one here. So that's common, normally open, normally closed. So that's my relay. I've just got two contacts on that relay. And we know that it's got a coil and it's 24 volts. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my normally open and I'm going to turn a lamp on. So I'm going to call that lamp 1. Now, I love to label this. It's R1 because it's relay 1. Dash 1, it's contact 1. So that would be here. This contact is contact 1. It doesn't have to be that one. That could be contact 1 and that could be contact 2. I'm just going to label them something. Okay, here. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to start with a normally open as well. And that's light 2. Okay, good. I have to label this R1-2. Now, if I don't touch anything, nothing's going to happen. I always draw ladder logic and then I'm thinking, okay, what happens if I don't touch anything and I go through it? In this case, I don't touch anything. That is open. That's not energized. That's in its normal state. This normally open contact in its normal state. Therefore, it's open. And this is also open. So, what happens if I did this? If I made this a normally closed contact, then if I don't touch this, that's not energized. That's going to be in its normal state. So therefore, it's closed. Light 2 will be on. Yeah, so I don't touch anything. Light 2's on, light 1's off. Now, this is the cool part. If I press play over here, if I close that, that energizes, this becomes closed. It doesn't become normally closed. It's a normally open contact. It just becomes closed. So, that part of that light comes on. This normally closed contact changes its state and is no longer in its normal state, so therefore it's open. And this becomes open and the light comes off. Cool. So what we've seen here is that we've seen one relay controlling two different lights. These are 12 volt, 24 volt lights and that's a 24 volt coil. And this is a normally open button. So when I press it, I'm actually reversing the logic of this button by actually having this light do the opposite of what you would think would happen when I press the button. Again, if I wanted to, I could just make that a normally open and then that would make sense because when I press a button, usually something happens. Now, let's actually reverse the logic of the button. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put a normally closed contact here. This is where I'm reversing logic. So again, a relay can do, we're focusing on the two things a relay can do right now. Is One is reverse logic, and the other is run multiple loads. If I wanted to, I could go get a relay with six contacts and run six things. But right now, I just have a relay with two. Okay, good. So if I don't touch anything, again, start with that. If I don't touch anything, what's happening? Well, light one and light two are on. Yeah, why are they on? Well, because if I don't touch this, there's current going to my coil. My coil is energized, so therefore that's not in its normal state. That's in its active state, which is closed, because it's normally open contact. This guy is also closed, because it's a normally open contact, and it's active, and it becomes closed. Now, again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make that a normally closed. Now what's happening? Okay, I don't touch anything. That light's on and that light's off. Yeah. Because this is a normally closed contact and it's not in its normal state. And it's in its active state. In its active state, it's not closed. It's open because right? it's normally closed contact. So when I press this button, 
This actually goes into its normal state, and that goes into its normal state. So therefore, that becomes open, and that light turns off. This becomes closed, and that light turns on. Yeah. So what we've done is, we've unpacked one relay, reversing logic, and also running multiple loads. And then we've also kind of thrown in reverse logic into our relay to see what happens. Um, we can get a little bit more complicated here. You make up your own and just try and make this more complicated and see what happens. But right now I think we should actually just move on to holding circuits.